welcome to June's studio vlog. Today I am drinking jasmine tea. Uh, go grab yourself a cup of tea for this vlog. I'll wait. Just kidding, I won't wait. Also, this month marks the one year anniversary of me doing YouTube here with you guys. Uh, I cannot believe that it's been a full year of me posting once a month. I've been really, really enjoying posting my studio vlogs every month, and I'm so grateful that you guys are enjoying them too. I've really been enjoying showing you all the other side of being a full-time artist, the more work-based part instead of just the art-based, the behind the scenes and everything I do to prepare for being a full-time artist. Please don't go back to my very first vlog, <laughs> my first June studio vlog. That would just be a bad experience for both you and me. Uh, I will keep it up though, for my own torment. <sighs> this month has been an emotional roller coaster. Be ready to see market prep, my first market of the season, some really exciting packages, and also like a terribly sad ending to this vlog. It was supposed to be... This was supposed to be the coolest vlog of the summer. It did not work out. You'll see why later. And it was still a good month regardless. I'm really grateful that you're here. Uh, I hope you enjoy. Grab some tea, get comfortable, and I will see you later. Bye! I did this in, I guess, the board and the cards in November, and then I did the cover in March, and I'm getting it in June. I'm so nervous. This looks so cool! It honestly turned out way better than I expected it would. It looks so professional. It looks so professional. Cause she's doing it through, she's self-publishing it. Okay. So it's through like, you can order it on a website online, Parlor Interactive Games. And so she provides the files and then they build it and then they send it off. That's yeah. so cool. It's really cool. Okay, wait. I've never seen my art in this format before. Walter's watching too. Okay. Oh my goodness. This is so cool! Oh! These are the, the cards! Okay, wait, how do I open this without... See those? Oh my goodness! Wow! And then the other cards, and then the backs. Did you do, design that? I designed all of this myself. And then the board game itself. <gasps> wow. Oh, and there's a... Wow! This looks so cool! That's my art! <laughs> This is the first thing that I designed. Oh, what? That's so cool. We, we should play it. We should play the four it. Of us. Yeah, me and Jay played it when she pitched the project to me at Polyfox. Uh -huh. She had like, it was literally paper that she had folded and then your chips were like, there was team green and team purple and we played it. There was no art. It was just blank pieces of paper, but it was a really fun game. Thank you for showing me. Of course.
Hello, and welcome to my garage. I kicked out all of the cars uh, so that I could hog this space. Today, I thought I would do a voiceover. Uh, I don't really want to edit this part, so you're going to get all of my mistakes and ums. As we do this, I have a drink here. It's kind of an energy drink because I'm so dead <laughs> today. Let's all just take a moment to hear this. Nice. So as you see me here, I am starting to practice my market setup. I typically do this like before my market season start or if I'm doing like more of a unique market and I don't know how I'm gonna set up, I just practice in my garage to make sure I have all my supplies and I don't need to buy anything and that sort of thing. So you see me here, strong girl, put up the table all by herself, uh, and I'm just going to be bringing all of my market supplies out into the garage so that I can practice my setup. I bought these like fancy new walls. Uh, I saw Radia from Knives Meow. She had these really cool walls for her Mocha Fest markets, and they were so cool and they displayed the art so well, and I was like, I definitely need these. <laughs> Radia told me which ones that they use, and so I bought some for myself, but in black, and this is the first time that I put them up, and I'm so happy with how they turned out. Um, unfortunately, they didn't work out as well in person, um, I'm recording this, like, way into the future, and unfortunately, most of my markets are outside this summer, and the wind just kind of knocked them completely down, which, I mean, I don't even know what I expected, to be honest. I've kind of decided that these walls will just be for my indoor markets, and then my outdoor markets, I won't use them at all. I also bought uh, a new print stand, which I am so jazzed about. Um, I only had the long one first for my smaller prints, and then I just got the bigger one for my bigger prints. And let me tell you, <laughs> I've been doing markets for two years now. The In the beginning of me doing markets, I didn't really care about my setup at all, I just kind of wanted my art out there as fast as I could. I was like, wow, cool, I got into markets, that's the only step I needed to do. <laughs> so my display was literally... Like, we had all these dinner trays at home, and so I took those dinner trays and I just laid, like, maybe five or six prints in them. I only brought one of each print, and I just laid them in the dinner trays, and that was it. I actually did, like, surprisingly okay at those markets. I have come to learn that one setup actually does matter quite a lot. People are just way more drawn to my art because they can see it propped up. I had a lot of fun with this setup, so I'm very pleased that it's working out for my markets. I'm just going to jump in right here and kind of explain those last two clips that you saw. Uh, those clips were moments before 
I got the worst news <laughs> ever. Um, I'm being very dramatic. Basically, two months ago, I was invited by the Edward Gorey House in Yarmouth Court, Massachusetts to come to the Edward Gorey House with, I think, around eight other artists that they believe uh, represent the legacy of Edward Gorey, which is such a huge honor. I was invited to come to the house with these other artists, uh, get a private tour of his house and his studio, have a lunch with everybody on the grounds, and uh, then have some time to create an art piece for their upcoming exhibition. This was such an amazing opportunity. Uh, even though I'm from Vancouver and I would have to travel all across the continent for one day, I was like, yes, of course I'm doing this. So those clips that you saw were me at the Vancouver airport uh, about an hour before my departure. So I was scheduled to leave on June 26th, arrive the morning of the 27th in Boston, and then make my way down to Cape Cod where the retreat would be on the 28th. It was gonna be an absolute headache of a week, but it was gonna be so worth it. But an hour before my flight, they canceled it with the excuse of staff constraints, which we came later to find out was that the pilots were on strike for overtime hours or something like that. This airline that I was flying with uh, canceled four other flights and so there was like 800 people who suddenly did not have a flight out that night. And there weren't clear instructions at all as to what we were gonna do, so it was basically three hours scrambling around the airport trying to figure out how the heck we were all gonna get to Boston or wherever the other canceled flights were. I waited in many lines, I ran around the airport and unfortunately the closest available flight that I could take was for Wednesday afternoon, the 28th afternoon, which was the day of the retreat, and I would not have arrived in time. Uh, I checked other airlines, I checked uh, into flying out of America, and it just, it just did not work out. So I unfortunately had to miss going to Boston. Um, I could not make it to the retreat, but the team at the Edward Gorey House was so gracious and kind, so they still want me to send over an art piece for the Edward Gorey Museum, which I have done already and I'm sending it off today. I'm very excited about it and you will see the process of that in my July Studio vlog. And if you're in the Massachusetts area, uh, they have their opening on July 22nd, so I highly recommend that you go stop by and see so many works from so many amazing artists. I'm dreaming of being there for the 22nd, but I don't think it's gonna work out. I kind of took the last week of June off to kind of cope with this. Um, I realized that this is a very privileged thing to complain about, so I just took that week off and just traveled around my local area. I completely ignored social media, I didn't film anything for YouTube, I just kind of needed to decompress. And then also brainstorm my idea for the Edward Gorey House Museum. So this was a part of the vlog where you were supposed to see my experience of the Yarmouth Port area uh, and traveling around and um, seeing the Atlantic Ocean for the first time, which I have never seen before. So just like imagine that that's happening right now. <laughs> I will try and get down to Boston at the next possible opportunity. Uh, it's actually somewhere that I've always wanted to go, so it's gonna happen. Uh, and I promise that I will take you along with me. It's me again. This here is the books that I made last month in May's studio vlog. You saw a bit of the process of that there. They finally came at the end of June and I am so pleased with how they turned out. Uh, as you see here, I am hand numbering them all uh, because I wanted the first edition ones to be very, very special to those that grabbed them. So they're all numbered out of 50. Uh, if you grab a first edition, you will get a hand numbered one.
Right now, my patrons are the only ones that have access to purchasing these books. If you see this video near the end of July, they'll be out for the public. Right now, they're just for my patrons. So if you wanna grab one of the first ones, hop over to my Patreon to learn more. I really can't wait for you all to see these books. They were so much fun to make and I, I cannot wait to make more.